So today I've got some pencils and I've got some charcoal and we're going to do an example in both of them. Both have their own merits for drawing movement and people. Um, pencil's really good for getting the detail and good for putting on first if you're going to be painting on top. Whereas your charcoal is really good for being quite freeing with it. Um, with movement you want a lot of gesture work going on um, and charcoal can give you that whereas pencil you, you tend to be a little bit more specific with what you're doing. Um, so yeah we'll do it we'll start off with an example with the pencil um, and then let's move on to charcoal and see how free um, our drawing ends up. I've got five reference images of ballet dancers so when you're drawing people you want to make sure you've got the limbs moving in the right directions um, you want to make sure you've got as much detail as possible with where muscles and things are as well um, and also your shadow and your light on there. Ballet dancers are amazing because of how much action is going on and they have incredibly long looking limbs um, the way that they're posed as well. So we're going to look at a couple of these in detail but I just wanted to give you an overview just now looking at all the different body types here and um, the different lights that are shining on them and um, so for example this one is very very bright there's very little shadow on it but you can still see the definition where her leg is um, like muscle there you've still got that definition of shadow at the arm and um, but overall it's it's very light so it's going to be good in terms of getting shape practiced Whereas something like this one is much better for shadow because there is a light shining in this sort of direction on her where you've got a really dark shadow on this leg and dark shadow underneath both the arms as well and even on this side. So it's quite, it's quite good to practice your shadows with this one. You can see real muscle definition on some of the arms and legs as well which is, is lovely to draw. Um, the skirt on this one's lovely because it sort of comes out in a, a really nice shape compared to the length of the limbs and then the width of the skirt. So this will be a good one for proportion. Um, and this one, this one's just a really nice image because she's sort of flying through the air. Um, you've got a bit of light showing on top of the foot whereas the rest of the leg is quite dark. Um, and this is quite good for when we look at the axis of our ballet dancer as well, which we'll go into as well. So let's start off with a pencil example um, and then we'll move on to our charcoal example. We're going to look at the, this example here and the first thing we want to do is just look at where the axis is in her body. So if you were to draw her as a stick figure, we would simply have the head, the body coming down, your two legs coming out, one arm up this way and one arm out this way. Now, drawn as a stick figure is quite good because you're at least getting everything pointing in the right direction first off before you actually go into too much detail. I'm going to just start on the page and let's just give it a shot. So I'm going to start with my, my head first off. I'm just drawing a circle just now. As much as our head is definitely not a circle, it's a good way to get it in. Um, and then I'm just going to take a line right the way down. I'm going to draw in the reference image just now, just where the line is, through the middle of our head. And if you just sort of copy that on, it's always a good place to start when you've got a sort of centre line. Now, I'm going to look at where the arms go. So just this arm sort of comes up in this sort of shape. If you take a line right to the centre of our body. So this is never going to be completely accurate just now but it will make sure that you can fit everything on the page. With such long limbs it's very common that a foot will end up coming off the page or an arm won't be able to fit on. And when we're drawing these out we just want to make sure that everything's going to fit on. So this one the arm is coming out more at this angle like that. Um, you can use your pencil to look at angles as well. So you can sort of press this on and see what angle that is and transfer that to your paper. Um, if you're not used to sort of drawing people yet, it's a really good way of making sure these are right. It means we're pretty much there. Let me keep that one. Um, this leg comes down at this angle and this leg comes down here. So it's like a, it's like a V shape. Can mark that on. I think actually that leg is 
not quite as angled. Just rub out what you need as well. And get rid of the rest of this line as well, we don't need that anymore. Okay, now we've got our stick man, or stick lady, in the shape that she needs to be in terms of limbs. Now it's time to start looking at the actual shapes of her body. So you normally find um, that torsos are either ovals, you can draw them as an oval, or you can draw them as triangles. Um, I'm going to draw her as an oval just now because the, the sort of way she's positioned, I feel like that's going to help me more. So just an oval here sort of starts just before the top of our legs. And just roughly marking that in just now. It's not going to be perfect, but it's going to give you a bit of a guidance to, to where it is. I just draw my circles round and round until I find the one I like. And then I rub out the rest. You might find this a bit alien though to, to draw like that. So just do it in your own way. Um, but it's quite good if you've never drawn a person before. Um, for our arms, we've got... Our arms are made up of three sausages, so we've got the top of the arm, we've got the forearm, and then we've got the hand. And similarly here, top, one sausage, two sausage, three sausage. And you can mark those in, so the arm comes out from the shoulder here. So we're going to do one, two, three. And this one comes out from this shoulder, which goes one, two, three. The legs are again made up of three sausages. You've got top of the leg, you've got bottom of the leg, and you've got the foot. Ballet dancers' feet are amazing because they, they point so well. Look at that lovely shape in there. And you want to almost be imagining where the top of the leg finishes here underneath the skirt because you can't see that bit. But I'm going to just give it a rough sketch in. One, two, three. And you can breathe a sigh of relief because it's going to fit on the page, which is good. Um, and this leg sort of sits behind this one. One, two, three. So you only see a little bit of the knee there. Two, three. And that's just got our main shapes of our person in. It's now time to make her actually look like her. So this is when we check that everything's lining up okay. Um, we want this foot to be sitting slightly lower than this one. So again, you can use your pencil for this and actually just line up this foot. Hits about there, this foot hits about there. That's not right, that's about right even. And then we've got this arm, we've got a gap between the head of roughly that. Yeah, I'm okay with that just now. Things will change a little bit, but that's not too bad. Um, and then let's draw in our skirt. When we draw in our skirt, this is what's going to form here. So this is what we call a negative space. And no matter what you're drawing, whether it's a still life, a person, an animal, you'll find a lot of um, photographs or reference images or still life in front of you will have a negative, a negative space. And the negative space you can actually draw in. Um, so you're almost drawing in your background here, like this. So it's like a triangle shape, it goes up to the elbow, like this, and just draw it as many times as you need it until you, until you get it right. And you can pause the video if you feel I'm going a little bit too fast. Um, you can pause it and make sure you're getting your shapes right. It's quite important to, to get these right at this point. So this is, we've drawn in this negative space, and then it's a curve that comes round here and this sort of angle going out. So we can use our pencil again just to check the angle. The angle's about there. And then you can curve it round. And you want to check where the curve hits on the knees. So you can still see a fair bit of the knee here, a little bit of the leg too. So if you feel that you've brought your skirt down too much, you can just bring it up a little bit more. It's taking me a few shots to get that. Don't feel you have to get it right first time. And again, these things will change as we go. A 
If you like, if it makes it a wee bit easier, you can always draw in where the skirt starts. Okay, now, this is the point where you kind of look away from your paper and look back and check that you're, you're happy where everything's sitting before we go into too much detail. The last thing you want is for you to draw an absolutely amazing head or an amazing foot and then you have to rub it out because it's not in the right place. Um, you can choose where you want to start. Personally, I'm going to start with the legs because I want to make sure that I'm happy with where they're actually sitting um, and they aren't going to fall off the page because it is a wee bit close just now. So now we're going to look at just the shape that comes down either side. And this is the same if you're drawing a person from real life. It all works the same. You can still use these sort of sausage shapes to pull the person together. You can still use your pencil to find out angles. It's just a little bit easier for me to show you on a reference image just now. So I'm going to just transfer that line coming down that side. And then the ankle comes out a little bit here and back down. And it's flat at the bottom. This side, just watch where the thigh comes up. Um, it's quite easy to draw really, really skinny thighs, but actually the width of this goes right out to here. And then this side comes down at a curve. You can draw in the little bits of the shoe, this might help you a little bit if you're not getting this shape quite right at the bottom. Because um, it's quite an unusual shape, it's not a natural thing to draw really. These little ribbons going across. I'm not going to get into too much detail just now, just a wee bit like that. See the edge of the shoe. And then I'm just going to tidy up this leg and rub out all the lines I don't need anymore. Now that's starting to look like a leg. You can draw in the knee a little bit. The knee's mainly done with shading, so don't worry too much, but if you want to just add a little hint of where some of the knee is, you can. We're now gonna look at the shape of the leg that's coming down this side. So it comes right the way down, and then it comes out for the heel. Um, so because it juts out so much, what I'm gonna do is actually draw a little circle just where the, the heel comes out. It sort of sits there. This looks really strange just now, doesn't it? So we've got a nice smooth line that comes down. She's not got much of a calf. Some people have got a much more defined calf. Um, hers comes straight down that sort of angle. Comes out for the heel. And then it comes down to a point. And down this side, um, it's actually a bit strange because you kind of almost want it to draw a big knee jutting out, but you've got a little bit of a curve that comes down and then curves out this way. So just trying to replicate that. So I think what I've done is I've made the calf a little bit too thin up the top here. And if you look at the negative space here, the legs are quite close together, whereas I've got quite a big gap. So what I'm going to do, just bring it out a little bit and rub that out. So you're always going to be changing things as you go. Um, it's not going to be right first time. And I might finish this drawing and it's not completely in proportion. Um, but that's the best way to get better, is just keep practicing. Some poses are easier than others as well. Just going over the top. 
So if you're struggling with getting the angle right of this leg, you can always use your, your pencil just to check what angle it's at. Transfer that on, I'm quite happy with that. Um, if you want to add in some more details with where the knee sits as well, that might help inform things. And again, with the, the little ribbons and the shape of the, the foot here. Oh, I'm admin shading already. I get, I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay, so that's me done my two legs. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I'm happy with those at the moment. I might decide once I've got the rest of my ballet dancer in that things will change. Um, I'm changing things as we go actually. Um, because once you've actually drawn other parts of your drawing, you might see something that needs to change elsewhere. I'm gonna leave the skirt as it is just now. Um, and we'll get the details of that on later. And I'm going to look at the shape of the torso. So the torso, the shoulders are coming right out. And actually because she's got this kind of leotard um, dress thing on, then it makes it a little bit easier to draw that in. Um, so let me rub out the pencil marks on this just now. I'm going to just try and transfer on what I can see here. It's this really nice curve that goes up. It's quite sharp. Um, it's going to be quite difficult to draw in actually. I'll bring this down. So it's quite, quite a flat line. It does come at, at angles, but it is quite straight almost. It comes out a little bit of the chest and then down into the waist. Bring it down a little bit sharper. And then at the back here, in fact, we better go for the other shoulder. Let's go down the other shoulder a little bit. And the, the top comes down a little bit further around the armpit. And then down the back. And there's actually a little cut out on the back of our dress, which you can pop in as well. Just tidying up any lines you don't need anymore. Go. I think our waist is probably a little bit narrower. I'm just going to bring that in a wee bit. And again, things might change as I do the rest of it, but we'll leave it like that just now. Um, a lot of the torso is done with shading as well, so we've got a shadow coming down and little shadows in the creases at both sides. And obviously this bit of neck um, here as well is going to be quite dark. Let's get this arm in now. This arm's got a lovely shadow under here, so a nice triangle shape for the shadow. Um, but at the moment, let's just get how basically straight and flat the arms are. You've got a little bit for the shoulder here and then it's quite straight, you've got a little tiny dip for where the elbow is. And because you've already drawn in the sausages here, you'll know where the elbow is. I'm going to bring it out for the shoulder. And, and then bring it down to the hand. And we'll tackle the, the hands afterwards because it's a wee bit trickier. And just rub out these lines you don't need. Okay. Um, I'm quite happy with the shape of that arm actually. I think that works out all right. Um, yep, and it comes out far enough as well. You want to make sure your arm's definitely coming out far enough and it's not too close to the body. Because um, actually if you look at almost a larger negative space here. It is really quite a big triangle, so just make sure it's, it's coming out of this angle. 
With the hands, one thing to remember about hands is a lot of people forget this big part here or your whole palm of your hand. The palm of your hand is the same length as your fingers. So you want to make sure that you're leaving a big enough space. So rather than doing a hand where you've just got fingers like that, a bit cartoony, but that's what, you've actually got a thumb and it comes up, you've got fingers like this and then you've got a whole palm. Fingers are a bit longer. But you've got a whole palm of the hand here. So you want to make sure you're getting all that in. A good way to do it is again, splitting things into to sausages. You've got a square, so you maybe want to do it here. You've got a square for your palm. You've got the sausage comes out of this part of the, the palm and it goes up to just above where the square is. Then you've got three little sausages for each of your fingers here. You've got one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And obviously they're slightly different sizes. Your pinky's a little bit smaller, so you've got one, two, three. Um, I'm gonna bring that one down a little bit. And then you can sort of go around the outside. You can even split your thumb into a couple of different parts if you want as well. Um, and bring that down the side. So you want to make sure you're getting all these parts in your hand. Depending on the sort of position that the hand is in, you're not going to see everything, but you do want to make sure you're getting as much detail as possible and not forgetting that palm. So the palm here, I'm going to just draw as a kind of oval shape. And then you can see the thumb comes out of it here. So you can draw the thumb on top in two parts and you've got this finger at the back comes out just drawing in little sausages where I see the fingers make sure you're getting this lovely curve rub out the pencil mark so you can see it okay and then you can go around the outside check you're happy with where everything is I wonder whether I've drawn her hand a wee big. It's a wee bit big. Let's try and make it a wee bit smaller. Get too enthusiastic about it. So same shape. I'm quite happy with the shape of it. It was just a little bit out. about these little pencil lines um, and when you actually put your shade in then it will change things as well. Right on to the next arm. Um, this arm's got lots of shapes going on up here. So we've got the shoulder, we've got the top of the arm, it goes in for a little dip at the elbow, back out, back in and then up to the finger. So there's a lot going on. Let's try and transfer that on. And then it goes right up. And then under here, we've got a little bit of the curve under the arm, around here, and back up as well. And then we're going to do the hand the same. So just make sure you've got a big enough sort of circle here. In fact, one little thing just to check is where this elbow is, so I think I need to bring the elbow up a little bit. You, know, you will notice little bits as you go. You might just think, oh, that's not at the right height, it looks a bit too small. can sort of mark in where the fingers are. So this finger goes right the way up, it's quite angled at the hand here. 
good as these ones sort of come out like this. It's going to go to the top. I think it's a little bit big again. I've got a habit of making... Oh no, actually I think that's not too bad. I'm just going to rub out some of the lines. It's maybe just looking a little bit large because of all the lines. Um, I'm going to rub out these lines in between the skirt as well. Don't need these anymore. And now it's time for the face. So the face, we want to draw in, make sure we've got this neck. So she's got quite a long neck and bring this up and then have a little look sort of shape it comes up without her hair imagine her hair wasn't there let's just draw the colour of her skin in and this will probably take a few shots just to make sure you're happy with it and the shape coming down here so you can split this into shapes as well if you find it a little bit easier, for example, the chin as an oval, um, the nose coming up here as well. And then you can draw her hair in. Can't see much of her hair actually because it's a dark background, it's quite hard to see. Um, but she's got a kind of low bun going on here, I think. You can rub it any lines you don't need, um, just to check that you're, it's looking all right. So you, the top of her head is just above the elbow joint. Yep, not too bad, bring it down a wee bit maybe. Which means that she's in proportion. Um, so you might want to check a few different proportion bits as we go. And then you can mark in where her nose is. So her nose sort of sits a little bit like this. And she's got her mouth, her eyes sort of up here, eyebrow over the top. When this comes in, and you can see the eye over this side. So you're not going to see all those lines when we actually shade it in. It's at least given an idea of where her face sort of sits. Do you take this line out here? Try again. It's a tricky nose on this one. God, that'll do just now until we sheet. Um, right, let's get shading. So let's look at the shading. This one's quite good because there's a lot of really kind of polar areas which are really dark, such as under the arm here, the back of the skirt, this line going right the way down the legs on either side, um, this part of the arm up here, and this arm's quite dark actually, bar the hand, it's quite dark. Um, the face is mainly done with shading as well. We want under this chin quite dark, um, the line coming down and the cheek as well. Um, so yeah, take your time making sure you get it right and you maybe want a little shadow underneath it as well. One of the most important things to add in is this back line right behind her. Just mark it in roughly just now. You can decide where it's going later. But just adding in that line makes her look like she's at least standing on something and you can have the shadow underneath. Um, yeah, so let's get you done.
Now when you're shading just make sure you're using as many different of your shading techniques as we went over last week um, and the week before as well with our pencil. So I've got a little bit of cross hatching going on where it's the darkest, I've got a little bit of um, smudging going on as well where I wanted it to look a lot smoother um, and I've used my rubber quite a lot to get really nice highlights shining through 
So like on the skirt, I've just used it to get top highlights. Um, right around the body, we want to make sure this is as light as possible down here and up here. And the last thing you want to be doing is just putting in where your brightest areas are and make sure that those are showing up. Um, so keep going over little bits, keep looking back. The face might take a few times, that's what I probably spent more time on the face than I did anything else to make sure that it actually looked like a person. Um, still adding little bits here and there. But yeah, look at where your lightest bits are and rub those out so that the last thing you've got are those real bright bits shining through and any sort of really dark bits as well, get those in as your last thing. Um, I'm just going to add that line back in at the back. There we go. And that is our pencil drawing. We've got lots of good proportion going on with the arms, legs, head, body um, and some shading in there and it looks like she's moving as well. The next thing we're going to do is a charcoal drawing. It's going to be so much faster and so much more movement. Um, so let's get started with that. Right, with charcoal we want to make sure that we're using lots of nice big strokes. Um, you want lots of lines going lots of different places and let's get some movement in this picture. So work from your shoulder as much as you can. You want your whole arm moving if possible or if that's not possible even just from your elbow makes all the difference instead of lots of tiny little lines from your wrist. So I'm going to start with this one and what's great about this one is she's got a bit of movement going this way. So actually the axis goes straight like that and then we've got a line straight down so if we're even to take a pencil the tip of our toe is in line with the centre of our head. I'm sure if I was a ballet dancer I would know that was maybe a good thing. <laughs> um, but yeah it should be straight down. Um, this one is pretty much horizontal and then this line and arm almost match up as well. So we can start marking that in with our charcoal. Start off with your head, just as we did with the pencil. And then get a line going all the way down. You've then got this arm coming out, straight out like this. And this arm goes up a little bit like this. They're probably quite long at the moment actually. The body comes down and this leg comes out at this angle. So have a look again at the negative space. Like that, where does this leg sort of comes down? This shape. There we go. And that's our little stick figure. So we can now start looking at adding in the sausage shapes for the legs. Try and get that angle going on. Doing this one a lot quicker because obviously we've been over quite a lot of this with the, the pencil drawing. Um, and I want you to try and move quite fast with it if you can as well. Make sure that body's long enough. I think actually my body's not long enough. Yeah, I would say that's too short. So what I'm going to do is just rub it out. And it's okay if you see it through. I'm not going to use a rubber to actually rub, it, rub every little detail out. Um, because I want to see some movement behind it and you want to see some bits of charcoal coming through. Um, so just to make sure that this is in the right place, I'm going to just look at making sure the body is long enough this time. There we go. So it's just coming down ever so slightly. Get our three, two, three. It's quite big. One, two, Okay, um, let's see where we get to with this time. Might not be right again. That's a joy of charcoal as you can keep going over the top of it until you get it right. Less fine details, more just getting the movement in. Start getting this shape in at the back as well. Okay. 
And don't worry about these shadows and muscles and things just yet. We will come on to that. All we want just now is getting our, our shapes right. And the shape of her head so it comes down. There we go. You see how fast that was? So I'm not expecting you to be quite as fast as that. Do remember that I do this quite a lot. Um, and I'm quite a fast drawer, just overall. It's probably a patience thing. I'm not overly patient with my drawing. Um, but I'm just rubbing out any little lines that maybe don't need there just now. There we go. And there's some there's some lines coming through that I had previously. These smudges beside it actually makes her look like she's she's moving. Um, and it adds so much more to your picture than if you've done a really, really fine pencil drawing. So keep going at all of this, just adding in more details as you come across it. Um, we're not expecting a perfect face for this one because that is quite small detail for your charcoal. If you've got charcoal pencils or something, I suppose it's a wee bit easier. Um, but if you're just using willow charcoal like this, then the, the joy of it is having not too much detail. So if you've taken a little step back and seen whether you're happy with what you've got, um, it's now time to add a little bit of shading and I'm going to chat you through this time because um, I think it's quite good to just look at where all the shading areas are and then using a rubber to rub out some bits as well. Um, right so I'm going to start actually with, we'll start over on the left hand side because I'm right handed and I will end up smudging things. So there's two things you can do if you're left handed, start on your right and work the other way across or you can get a sheet of paper underneath your hand and that just stops things smudging. Because I'm using this as quite a loose drawing, um, I'm not that bothered about smudging just now, so I'm just gonna just gonna roll with it. So this bit of the arm is really dark. We're gonna go right in with that and draw in the shape of the shadow. So try and get the fact that this is this is rounded, comes all the way up. It's quite a, quite a large hand there. You can draw in the negative space in between the, the fingers and the thumb. Always takes me loads of shots to do my hands with charcoal, every time. Eventually it gets there. Cool. And this shadow up here, now this is a nice shape. The definition she's got in her arms is incredible. I always feel you become quite passive when you talk about people when you're drawing them. So, so judgy. In a nice way that was, but you do have to look at all these little bits. Now she's wearing black, so there are bits that are a lot lighter than the other bit. At the back here, actually I think it might be a wee bit of a navy blue at the back, but it is a lot lighter the way the light's shining on it. And right the way around here, you don't really see much difference of the black in here. So don't feel too scared to just make it quite dark. Um, you can do that two ways. You could just sort of mark it in just now, or you could leave that to last and just see how dark everything else is before you actually add that bit in. Um, I've left this quite messy, but I will tidy up some bits with the rubber, but I'm just getting in as much charcoal as I can just now. Um, so yeah, the suit sort of ends here and then she's got a little bit of leg that comes down. Thank <laughs> you. 
And there's some bits that are definitely darker than others, like round this bit down here. And I'm being quite sketchy with it. Don't feel you have to put a bit on, smudge it all in, or put a bit on and definitely cross hatch everything. Just being a little bit smudgy with it just now, and just being a little bit straight with it just now, means you can build on top of that. So the legs, there's little ribbons that come up. And this foot is a very unusual shape. It's very dark at the front. If there's bits you've put in, you could always just rub them away with your finger just now. Okay, now this side, this curves out like this. It's a little bit lighter there. Okay. Just a little curve so it goes up from the bum and into the waist. And this comes right out. Look at that angle, straight out. So you can always trace onto your picture as well, if that helps. Right, let's do this leg coming down. And this arm's going to be, well, the head, then the arm. It's going to be the last bit. So what is allowed, which some people don't like doing, is you can blend bits together. So for example, at the bit of our legs here, you actually don't really see where one leg starts and the other leg ends in the photograph. Um, if you're seeing this in real life, it's even more prevalent sometimes. So do just have that blend going exactly the same in, from one leg into the other. You don't have to have an exact line in between where the legs start and end. And that's one of the joys of of drawing rather than taking a photograph as you can just leave bits out and um, even leaving out certain parts like see this bit of the leg it almost blends into the background it's so bright so you don't necessarily need to have that line in there you don't always want a full outline going right the way around all of your work And then this foot coming down. And the heel comes out. I love drawing that bit, the ankle into the heel, into the foot again. I just think it's a great shape. And she's got a little bit of shadow just underneath. Add that in. Go. Cool. Right, head. So, this is the trickiest bit, I would say, out of the whole picture. It's getting the, the face and the head right here. Um, you want to make sure you're dark enough in some bits, but not so dark that you give her a beard. And she's kind of got her eye closed, actually. Um, quite a noticeable eyebrow. And you can see a bit of the nostril there as well. Just try and go as dark as you can. You don't, or as detailed as you can even, sorry, not dark, detailed. There's going to be bits that just are really difficult with your charcoal. But the main thing you want just now is just to get your lights and darks in. And once we go in with the rubber there, that'll look 10 times better. Because she does have a bit of a beard. Cool. And then this arm as well. Make sure we've got that shoulder, that collarbone coming over. 
I've got this lovely dark bit that goes all the way up. and the hand come down. Um, there's a lovely shadow in here. We're going from bring it out. Go oh, that hand went a little bit easier than the last one. It's a wee bit spindly just now but we'll get the rubber in and get some bits rubbed out. Yeah, so that's got our main sort of bit. The other thing, just adding in your ground. Your ground makes your wool. There we go, she's not flying anymore. Um, you can always shade that in as well if you're wanting a bit darker. In the photograph, it's a bit darker towards the back and the front. Um, but when you're doing a painting, you can kind of, or a drawing even, you can change it a little bit. Just make sure you've got your lights shining at your right angles. Okay, now let's go in with the rubber. Um, you might want to tidy some bits on the outside if it's looking a wee bit too grubby. Um, I'm gonna keep in quite a lot of mine just because I quite like this bit in here. But each to their own, some people hate having all the grubbiness around the outside and want to rub it all out and that's okay. I'm gonna keep in some little bits. Um, if you've got a putty rubber, you can dab it off as well. Um, so you don't lose it all, you'll maybe just lose some bits of it. Um, I'm going to rub out the bit in between our finger and our thumb here because that's quite a nice negative space. Um, and then you can go in on the top and get this highlight in as well. I'm going to take out a whole bit of our arm here because this is really light. Charcoals, you've definitely got your own style with charcoal. Mine's is messy. I like mess. I like it to look quite rustic, if you like. Whereas you might prefer a more pristine look. smudge in the bodysuit a little bit so it's got a good coating right over it and I'm going to take my charcoal and go back in over the top actually. I don't like anything looking too smudged, I think it's nice to see some charcoal strokes coming through. Then I'm going to define this bit. A little bit of a line coming up. Well, that's quite nice. And then we want to make sure we've got a good highlight going down the top of the leg. Some bits more than others. Um, and if that line disappears, it disappears a little bit as well. That's okay. Now if you're particularly happy with a bit, hairspray it so that it doesn't move. Um, if you're not happy, please don't hairspray it because it won't change. 
Um, now I'm just going to go in and perfect a few little bits. I need to change the lips here a little bit and the face. I need to change his hand a little bit as well. So I'm just going to go in and do a few more little details um, and then I'm going to call it finished. Okay, I think that's me finished. Um, there's some bits that are a wee bit more pristine than others, but overall I love the movement of it. I love that the energy of the charcoal is kind of looking like she's got a bit of energy to it as well. Um, the longer I look at something, the more I keep adding little bits in, um, which change it. But um, I'm going to stop there. Um, and that is our charcoal drawing of Ballet Dancer with Movement. See you later. <laughs>